In this video, I'm going to show you how Model Builder can be really useful in either ArcGIS Pro or ArcMap. I'll be showing you the process in Pro, but it works almost exactly the same in ArcMap. I'm looking at some data for Louisiana. I'm, sh I'm showing some hurricane tracks uh, in Louisiana and around Louisiana. And what I want to do is create a model that will help me find vulnerable sites close to hurricane paths. So on my map I have some airports, cell towers, hospitals. I may have any number of point data that I want to check. Do any of these sites fall close to the hurricane path? But I want to make a model to allow a user to pick a hurricane path by name and then the model goes and finds all the vulnerable sites nearby. So I'll show you how that works. I have a toolbox called Hurricane already. I'm going to right click on the toolbox and create myself a new model. That opens a blank model builder canvas where I can drag and drop data sets and tools to create my workflow. So what I want to do is get the Hurricane feature class or the layer actually from my table of contents, drop it on my map, uh, sorry, drop it into my model, and then I want to allow the user to pick a particular hurricane by its name. Well that's done with a select by attributes, right? So I'm going to go over to the geoprocessing pane and find the select by attributes tool and drag it into my model. So I'll connect the hurricane tracks layer to the select by attributes tool as the input layer. And this is how Model Builder works. We drag data sets and tools into the model and we connect them into a workflow. If I do oh, you notice that the model section got colors behind it. That means it has enough data to run right now, but I haven't specified the SQL query yet. So I'll double click on the tool to set the parameters for this tool. So I want uh, to have a clause that selects the hurricane by name. I'm going to say name is equal to, let's say, Katrina, right? These are all the hurricane paths that I have in this one layer. So I'm going to say name is equal to Katrina, and that's going to be the default hurricane that this model works with. So I'll say OK, but I actually want to make the model flexible enough where the user can specify both the name of the hurricane tracks layer and the hurricane name itself when they run the model. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll right click on these uh, hurricane tracks and I'll say make that a model parameter. Once it's a parameter it means it's going to be uh, it can be specified at runtime. So when my model is run the user will be able to choose which hurricane layer they want to work on. I also want to make the selection expression be a model parameter. So I'll right click on the select layer by attribute tool and create a variable from the expression parameter. And I'll right click and make that a model parameter so the expression will also get specified at runtime. But again the default will be Katrina. But when the user runs the model they can change that if they like. So now I have a tiny little model that basically just allows the user to pick a her, a layer of hurricanes and an expression to pick a hurricane name and it finds that hurricane and highlights it. Now I need to select all of the um, hospitals and schools and cell towers and all that are somewhere close to that hurricane. Well that's going to require a select by location tool. So I'll go get the select by location tool and drag that into my model. Now I'll take the uh, output of the hurricane path selection, pass it into the select layer by location as the selecting feature. Okay, so I'm going to use that hurricane path uh, and uh, I need to know what I'm going to select. So I could just take the hospitals, the airports, the cell towers one by one and, and make models for each one, but I want this model to be flexible and be able to work through any of these um, feature classes. So over here in catalog I have a geodatabase called USA Vulnerable Sites and I want my model to work through each one of the point feature classes in this Vulnerable Sites geodatabase. I don't want to have to tell it one by one what feature classes to select. So I'll make that happen by going up here to my model builder diagram ribbon and getting the iterator 
called iterate feature classes. So an iterator creates a loop. It steps one by one through each element in a list. And the list is going to be all of the point feature classes in this vulnerable sites geodatabase. So to set that up, I'll double click on the iterate feature classes tool and I'll pass in that geodatabase as the input. I don't have a wildcard. That would be like if I want to find all the feature classes that start with a C and loop through those, for example. But I don't want that. But I do want to choose only the point feature classes. Right, so this iterator again makes my model run once for every point feature class in this geodatabase. Happens automatically. So I'll say OK, and you'll notice that the iterate feature classes tool passes out the actual feature class that was found. And while it's doing it, it grabs into another variable the name of the feature class. So the green variable will point to the actual actual feature class, like the first time through the loop, it'll be airports. The word, the variable name will just be equal to the word airports in case I want to use that later for an output name. And, and I do want to use it, so let's keep keep that in our mind. So then I'd like to take these airports. It's the first time through the loop. I'd like to take the airports, find which ones are close to this hurricane path that I've chosen. But you can't take the airports feature class and feed it into a select layer by location because select layer by location doesn't work on feature classes. It works on layers. So we have to put one more tool in here to take this feature class and convert it to a layer. That's sort of like bringing it, bringing it onto the map or maybe just bringing it into memory, right, as a layer. And so that tool is called Make Feature Layer. Once I've used the Make Feature Layer tool, then I have it in memory and I can use tools like Select Layer by Attributes, right? So, so I'm taking the airports. I'm making them a feature layer, and I'll send that output feature layer into the select layer by location as the input feature. So now my model says, let the user pick a hurricane track. Uh, sorry, let the user pick a hurricane layer that's got tracks in it. Let them specify the expression to choose the hurricane by name. Select that hurricane path, and then use that hurricane path to select airports, schools, cell towers, hospitals, whatever else might be in that feature class, in that geodatabase. So there we go, we're almost finished, except that the result of this model is a selected set. And I actually want the result of the model to be new feature classes. I want to pull out the airports close to the hurricane path and put them into a separate feature class. I want to pull out the cell towers close to the hurricane path put them in a separate feature class so that I could take these smaller feature classes, send them off to an emergency response team, and they only have to look at the data that's relevant to them. So the last step that I need is a little tool called Copy Features, which is very much like a data export. So it takes the selected set that's in, in memory right now and turns it into an actual feature class that's pretty straightforward except that I want to control the output feature class location and name so I'll double click on the copy features tool and I set my output feature class I want it to go into the USA vulnerable sites geodatabase but I want to name it something funny I want to name it using this variable up here and we, we de declare it, we, we mention a variable or, or use a variable by putting percent signs around the variable name. So I'm going to say get it here in a second. So my output feature class is going to be whatever the input feature class name was. First time through the loop, it'll be airports. And I'll follow that with in hurricane path. Second time through the loop. If the input feature class is cell towers, then the output name will be cell towers underscore in underscore hurricane path. Right? So that variable that we created during the iteration process is grabbed and used down here at the end when we get ready to put our output feature class name. So there's our model. We have one more thing though. We didn't specify the um, distance for the select layer by location so I'll double click that and I'll set my search distance to 50 miles as a default but I really want the user to be able to specify that distance 
at runtime. So I'll also right click here and create a variable from the parameter search distance. See, and, and then I can mark that as a model parameter, meaning that can be specified at runtime too. So now the user will be able to specify the name of the layer they want to work on, the name of the hurricane, and what they want their search distance to be. But it'll always work through all of the feature classes in this geodatabase. So it's a lot of steps, but I really wanted you to see that you drag data sets, you drag tools into your model, you string them together into a workflow. Anytime you want, you can pull out any one of the tool's parameters and allow the user to specify that uh, value at runtime. So let's save this guy. Now close it up. And we'll go over here and rename it. We don't want it just to be called model. So we'll call it, uh, how about find sites. The name is the actual name of the tool, which I would use if I were calling this maybe through Python. And the label is what's going to show up over here in Toolbox in my catalog pane. So the label can have spaces, and it's kind of like an alias. So there's my Find Sites model. I'll double click it to run it. And it looks like pretty much any of the tools that we run through Arc uh, Pro. And again, this works almost exactly the same back in ArcMap. So here's my layer name, Hurricane Tracks. I can change that if I want. Here's my default SQL query. Name is equal to Katrina, but I could change that if I want. And I can even look for multiple hurricane paths if I want to. But I'm just going to use Katrina for now. And there I can change my search distance if I want. So you can see with no programming, we created a really nice user interface here for our model. So I'll run this guy, and as it runs, you'll see that it selects the hurricane path. There's Hurricane Katrina, and meanwhile, it's creating the other feature classes in the background. Now, I could have specified to have those feature classes added directly to the map, but I didn't. But they are back here in Catalog. If I refresh this geodatabase, you'll see all the new feature classes that got created. So, for example, if I bring in the cell towers in the hurricane path. You see all the cell towers within 50 miles of that hurricane. The cities, the hospitals, the airports. So there you go. It's a very quick, uh, easy way to create a workflow and automate processes and then share those processes with other users. Because these tools the, the entire toolbox, in fact, can be easily shared with other people by just giving them the .tbx file. These models can also be published as geoprocessing services. If you want to learn more about Model Builder, check out our two-day Introduction to Model Builder class uh, on our website, teachmegis.com. Or give us an email, send us an email if you have any questions. Uh, the email address is info at teachmegis.com. I hope to see you in class soon.